pray with me, please? Speak, Lord. Your servants have gathered, and we are listening. Speak to our hearts. Let your love transform us from the inside out. Tell me to be your messenger to your people. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts together be always acceptable in your eyes. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to go a little further this week with what we were talking about last week of, about being called. I thought of a great example. At the time of the Montgomery bus boycott, back in 1955, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a young pastor. He came into town the year before and hardly anybody knew who he was. And of course, in 1955, Rosa Parks famously would not move from her seat on a Montgomery bus, and she was arrested. And there's this movie that's been made called Boycott that portrays the scene in a community meeting after Rose Park's arrest. And the black pastors met with the community leaders to decide how to respond to this arrest. Now the movie portrays a somewhat tense meeting with differing ideas of what could be done and what should be done. And they decided to elect a leader of their group, but they reached an impasse. Because within that community, there were sort of two factions behind two different leaders. Each one had his following. And if the other were elected, the whole thing would fall apart because the other side would walk out. Finally, as a compromise, they settle on Dr. King. Now, Dr. King is sitting in the back of the room in the basement of a fellowship, in the basement fellowship hall of a church. He's just sitting there, minding his own business, a relative unknown. One minute he's just sitting there, and the next minute he gets nominated, and the whole group elects him. They unite behind him just like that. There was a day in his life when everything changed. Before that day, he was just the new Baptist preacher in town. And after that, every day, he was a civil rights leader. Not just for Dr. King, but for our whole nation. Everything changed that day. So we need to think a little more about what happened between the beginning of that meeting and the end. What happened to Dr. King also happened to a group of fishermen in Galilee. Jesus said to them, come and follow me. And their lives were never the same. But not only that, but the world was never the same after that. You see, these are all people who were called. God had a plan for them. God had a plan for Dr. King. God had a plan for those disciples. I doubt if you had talked to Dr. King before that meeting, if he had any idea that that day was going to change his life. I think if you ask him if he wanted to go there and step into the spotlight and become a civil rights leader, I don't think he would have said yes. He'd trained long and hard to be a pastor. But that day, God called him from the ministry that he was in into a bigger ministry on a national and international stage. Peter, James, and John, they were just earning a living. They were just doing their job. They were fishermen, earning by the sea. And this strange young rabbi walks down the beach and suggested a completely different adventure than the one they already had. 
Did they know how following Jesus was going to change their life? Did they know what it would be like to accept that call? Did they realize that their personal story was about to be drawn into a much bigger story? We don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us. But when the call came, all these men had faith and courage not to back up. As God changed the course of their lives, they kept moving forward. They didn't run from what God was calling them to do. They didn't run from change. They didn't hesitate when Jesus said, follow me. James and John left their father Zebedee right there in the boat. One minute he had two helpers, the next minute he didn't have any. And what about Zebedee? Why didn't he come? See, we don't know. But James and John embraced the change that God wanted to make in their life. They jumped out of that boat and went to do something they knew nothing about. Now, if we think about it, God is really in the change business. Say that, change business. Change business. Yeah, He's in the change business. Change occurred in Jesus' earthly life as well, didn't it? We talked about it when He was baptized and the Holy Spirit came down on Him and nothing was the same after that. When God calls, if we respond, it changes the course of our life forever. He shows up in our lives and He wants some kind of obedience from us. But what happens next? It's up to us. God's in the change business. Jesus had the Holy Spirit come down on him and he began to travel and to preach and to teach and to heal and his life was never the same. This whole season of epiphany is the idea of how Jesus coming here changed everything that came afterward. God knew that we needed help. God knew that things needed to change. God knew that we were sinners, that we were headed for death. There was nothing else that we could do. So God sent His Son to change everything, to make the impossible possible. Jesus brings the possibility of eternal life to us. His life even calls creation to renew itself. And He calls all of us to share His love in this world. So after He came, nothing was ever the same. Now one of the most important lessons we can get from this Scripture today is we see that God's call is not reserved for special people. I love that song that we sing, Everyday People. He called everyday people. Not just specially educated, specially gifted people like Dr. King. Look who Jesus called. He could have gone to the tribe of Levi. All the way through the Old Testament, the tribe of Levi led their worship. First in the tabernacle and then in the temple. They were the ones that God had given that journey to. But Jesus didn't choose them. Jesus could have gone to the religious folk. You know, the ones who are really zealous. The amen pew. He could have gone to them. There were Pharisees and Sadducees and they had education. They knew all about what God wanted them to do. They were educated people. They had the skills. They had the knowledge. Jesus didn't choose them. In fact, Jesus went nowhere near what I would call the church to choose His disciples. <laughs> well, we ought to go home thinking about that. 
Jesus called ordinary folks out, in, out of the world, the ones that were doing their jobs. He came to them right where they were. The fishermen are down there on the beach. That's where Jesus is. He's walking along saying, come on, follow me. I'll make you fishermen of a different kind. They had no special education. They had no special skills. But what did they have? They had obedient hearts and God knew it. God's looking at their heart. He said, that's the one I need. The one that wants to serve. And they were willing to obey. And Jesus said, come follow me. Friends, every one of us here today, every one of us, is called by Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, Jesus called you. It's not that you didn't tell anybody. Jesus called you. God is calling you. We're no different than those fishermen. We're just here living our lives. Why? Right? Some of us still working, some of us in retirement. We're just living our lives. We got our families, we got a mortgage, maybe, we got bills to pay. Just earning it. And Jesus shows up in our lives and he said, Follow me. And if we respond, our lives change forever. <coughs> See, Dr. King, one minute he was just a pastor, the next minute he was the leader of a movement. And that's you too. You're part of a little story until you start following Jesus. Then you become part of a bigger story. This is a little church in a little town. We're part of a bigger story. When we follow, our lives become different. When we follow, it's a life that we maybe never would have even chosen. It's one that we wouldn't even have dreamed of. If we begin to love and serve, we get swallowed up. Our personal story becomes part of a much bigger story, a much more important story. And you say, well, that's fine, preacher, that's fine, but I don't have any special skills to be used by Jesus. I'm an ordinary person, I got an ordinary life, I got an ordinary set of skills. Friends, there's good news for you this morning. You think you don't have the skills you need to help Jesus, right? God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. Hello? Y'all out there? God calls those and then equips them. He doesn't call those already equipped. You don't have to be a good public speaker. You don't have to go to seminary, Methodist Church. You don't have to go to seminary. You don't have to take an evangelism course. You just have to have an obedient heart. Martin Luther King Day just passed. And he had this thing that he said in the drum major instinct that I love. I keep going back to it. James and John wanted to know who was going to be on his left and his right. And he said, it's not for me to give you. Because true greatness doesn't come by favoritism. It comes by fitness. And he says, it's great. If you want to be great, that's wonderful. If you want to be out in front, wonderful. He says, understand the greatest among you is going to be a servant. You're called to do that. And what's great about that is you can be great. All you have to do is be obedient to that call. We don't need special skills to be used by Jesus. We just need an obedient heart. We need to be open to His invitation. When He says follow, we just have to get our feet moving. We don't have to already be ready. We'll be ready by the time we get to do whatever Jesus calls us to do. God's grace is is always all around us. He's trying to get into your heart right now. All you have to do is just open up to it. All you have to do is just give Him an inch and He'll come in. And He'll change your life forever. You'll be part of the great movement. 
we just let the Spirit into our hearts, Jesus can use us. If you can let Him in, you'll become a new creation. You'll become part of the new creation. Something a lot bigger than each one of us. We know what it looked like for the disciples. What does it look like for us? What do we have to change? How would our lives be different if we did that? Well, here's what I know. I don't know everything, but here's what I do know. It involves action. How do I know? Because if you listen to the way Jesus talked, he, he didn't say to them, Peter, you just sit in that boat over there and you think about me and think about how much you love me and then just go on, row out to sea, do whatever you're going to do. That's not what he said. He said, come follow me. We're going to do something different. Come and follow me. Does that sound like sit still? That sounds like do something, doesn't it? Then when he left, he ascended into heaven. What did he say? Go, make disciples. He didn't say, y'all go in and sit, on, sit in church on Sunday. Let that preacher do a little shout and go home, nothing different. He didn't say that. He said, go and make disciples. He didn't say, sit home and contemplate how much you love your fellow man. He said, love one another. And this is the one who said he loved the world so much he sent his one and only son to sacrifice himself. He did something about our sin problem. He did something for us. He didn't just sit up there in heaven and think about how bad it was going to end for us. It involves action. I don't know what your action looks like. Listen to your heart. You, you pray, do you listen? I know you sit there and ask God for stuff. Do you ever stop at the end and say, Lord, speak to my heart? And then... You do that for a little while? Boy, you won't believe what the Lord will tell you. Be ready. He might say, take dinner to somebody sick. He might say, take a meal to someone who's lost a loved one. He might say, visit the person in the hospital or the nursing home. And he might prepare you first. He might say, it's not going to smell great in there. But you go on and visit them anyway because they need to hear from you. He might say, go check in on, a, on that shut-in person. He might say, pick up groceries for somebody who should not be out in this cold. He may say, call up those people we haven't seen in church for a while. Not everyone who hears that call is going to respond. How do I know? Talk about it. How do I know? Zebedee. Right? How do I know not everybody's going to respond to God's call, Zebedee? He didn't get out of that boat. He liked it in the boat. It was comfortable in the boat. He had a little comfort zone built around him. He knew his job. He knew what he was doing. He, I'm not getting out of this boat. Fish for man. I don't know what you're talking about. Keep walking. Not everybody who hears this call will respond, but here's the thing. Cautionary tale, right? Here's the thing. Remember the religious leaders? Remember the people in the Amen pew God didn't call? Did God force them to do something for Him? No. He didn't force a response. He gives everybody free will. But guess what? They didn't get blessed by it. God found somebody else to do the work and just went on because God's going to get God's stuff done, but He doesn't have to use you if you want to stay in the boat. Zebedee wanted to stay in the boat. And we miss a blessing and God will call someone else. And it's the same... Us going to be quiet. It's the same for churches. That's it again. It's the same for churches. If we get so busy doing what we've always done, doing the thing the way we've always done it, 
God may be calling us to something new. And He's going to get His stuff done if we don't do it, but we'll miss the blessing. We want to be obedient. We want to be... And so how do we... We've got to listen. So if we're ready to respond to God's call, if we're willing, when Jesus calls, we want to be ready. If, we're, if that's who we are, what are we going to need to do? We're going to need to seek God's will. We're going to need to pray and listen like I told you. Listen for God. Open up His Word. See what He says to you today. Just say that prayer for you. Open up and say, Lord, show me what you have for me today. Tell me what you need me to do. Open that Word up. It'll jump off the page. You won't have any doubt. We have to listen. And we have to leave our comfort zone. And we have to, this is a dirty word, be willing to change. We have to leave our old life and our old habits behind. And work will be required. But it's not in our strength. The Holy Spirit will give you all the strength you need. Because of the hope we have in Jesus, we know if we do this work, the rewards will be great. In fact, the rewards will be eternal. As we listen to God's voice, as God's love lives in our heart and begins to change us, as we become part of God's work, we will change the world around us. That happens when the light comes on in our life, when the light comes on in our heart, we are going to show this world that the kingdom of God is not just near, it's already here. Let us pray. Lord, lead us and guide us. Help us to open our hearts to you, to be obedient, to not worry about our comfort zone, not worry about the way we've always done it, not worry about what our gifts are already. Just listen to your voice and take the first step. Respond to your call. Jump out of the boat. And don't look back. Help us, Lord, to become part of that new creation. In Jesus' name we pray.